Hi, my name is Adrian Payne. I've been working for Process IQ for over seven years, uh, helping gold operations with uh, instrumentation and advanced control, and also helping them with general process related issues. I've been to many gold mines in and around Australia, and one of the key opportunities that I see for a lot of gold mines for improving efficiencies and increasing recoveries is automation, particularly cyanide automation. The first step to automating things is, is being able to measure them. So what are the important things to measure in a gold circuit? We mentioned the cyanide. It's really important to measure the cyanide in the leach tanks, usually at the positions where you're adding the cyanide, also in the last CIL tank before it goes out to tails. The pH. It's the pH that stabilizes the cyanide. If the pH is too low, you're going to be losing a lot of cyanide. If the pH is too high, that means you've been adding too much lime. The oxygen. It's the oxygen and the cyanide that do the leaching. Uh, if the oxygen is too low, it means you're essentially wasting cyanide. Every ore type has a different oxygen demand. Some ore types will use a lot more oxygen and your available oxygen is much lower. So really important to, to be able to measure this, usually in the leach tanks, uh, but occasionally you need to also measure in the CIL tanks. The carbon concentration. It's really important to know how much carbon you've got throughout the circuit. You need to measure in every tank. Uh, this is really important to be able to manage the carbon transfer, but also to make sure that you don't have too much carbon or too little carbon. Too much carbon will mean you're generating a lot of fines and uh, you could lose a lot of gold through the fines. Uh, or if you've got too little carbon, uh, you risk losing gold through solution losses. So how do gold mines typically measure cyanide in their leach circuit? Most gold mines have online analyzers which are automatically sampling from different positions uh, in the circuit. Uh, they filter the slurry and the filtrate is sent to the analyzer where they uh, determine the cyanide using potentiometric titration or amperimetry. There are still a lot of gold mines out there that rely solely on manual measurements. The operators would go and grab a, a sample, they would uh, filter this and uh, titrate the filtrate using rhodonine and silver nitrate. The cyanide concentrations are then entered into a logbook and the logbook is sent to the control room where they, they will decide to increase or reduce the cyanide. So how do gold mines typically control cyanide in their lead circuit? There are many gold mines that rely on manual control where the control room operator would make manual adjustments to a control valve or they would send an operator into the field and make manual adjustments to a field valve. It's really difficult to keep the concentration at set point and this is because of the long residence times in the leach tanks. It can take sometimes hours before you see the full extent of your changes. Sometimes uh, operators would try to make quick uh, adjustments by closing the valve completely or fully opening the valve to try and ramp the cyanide up, but often they forget the valve open or closed and they are overshooting the set point or undershooting the set point. In order to avoid periods uh, where the concentration is too low, often the metallurgists would set a much higher set point than needed and this is to avoid uh, losing gold. Nowadays, most gold mines that have online analyzers would have their readings connected to their control network, the SCADA or DCS. They would also have a PID control loop, which would use these readings to automatically adjust the control valve. The long residence times in the leach circuit can also make it difficult for a PID control strategy uh, to get to set point and to keep it at set point. At Process IQ, we use a model predictive controller which has the residence time built into the model. 
These type of controllers model the behavior of the plant and they predict where the plant is heading in the future. The controller ensures that you get to set point a lot faster and uh, they try to keep you at set point. Uh, they also adapt to changing conditions. Sinoprobe. What is Sinoprobe? The unit has been around for 20 years. There are over 40 installations in and around Australia, and there are more than 140 worldwide. In one particular mine in Western Australia, they have seven analyzers, and they've been running non-stop since 2009. The unit can measure free cyanide and what cyanide, and it can measure from three different measurement points. The unit has two different measurement methods. It uses potentiometric uh, titration and it can use amperimetry. The amperimetry method has a very high measurement uh, frequency, usually under five minutes. So what makes Sinoprobe different from other online analyzers? I think the thing that makes Sinoprobe different from other analyzers is its ability to measure the available cyanide for leaching gold. Some mines that have very high copper uh, struggle with recoveries because of the available cyanide. At one particular mine, their uh, recoveries improved significantly when they used the Sinoprobe readings. They now have five analyzers. They have on their leach circuit and on their detox circuit. The unit also has fewer interferences from things such as thiosulfate. Salt also does not affect the readings. We have one unit that's measuring uh, in over 300,000 TDS. I think the biggest benefit for Sinoprobe is our service and support. We not only support the instrument, but we are often helping with general process related issues because some of us are also metallurgists and process engineers.